stay in the line of onboard the USNS Mercy. But I'd say before we deployed, a lot of what we were doing was just getting our supplies ready, doing inventory, making sure all of our patient equipment and patient supplies as well were stocked. Onboard the Mercy, there was a lot of downtime, meaning you really had to have some sort of routine just to get your day going. But it's weird because you work there, your nine to five job of doing your pre-deployment stuff and doing everything that your chain of command asked you to, but you also live there. So you also had to find that balance of all right, well, I'm technically off work. Let me go work out real quick. Or I know Chow's at this time. And then you're gonna have those times of, well, they're playing a movie over here in the galley or out in the lounge, they're playing a movie there. And a lot of reading, a lot of watching movies, a lot of studying, and just a lot of hanging out on top of just your daily routine stuff. I kind of fell into the weird category just because of where I was stationed at. Most of the people that were getting pulled from San Diego Hospital and the outlying, outlying clinics, it was technically a four month deployment for them. But since I was um, up at Banger and I had to leave a month earlier, it was more of like a five month deployment. While on the Mercy, we definitely hit a lot of ports and visited uh, a lot of different countries. While we were stateside, as soon as we pulled off in San Diego, we had to stop over in Hawaii and Guam just for some supply replenishment and picking up more medical personnel from those areas. But after that, we had visited Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, and um, a small but newly formed country called Timor-Leste. So for this deployment on the Mercy, it was a humanitarian mission. Like I had said earlier, um, it's called Pacific Partnership, and I had deployed 2016, so I was on the Mercy for PP-16. Usually the Mercy uh, deploys every two years for Pacific Partnership. It really just depends on the government and how, they're, how they want the relations with uh, Asia, specifically Japan, Philippines, and more importantly, China um, to correlate. So that's why the Mercy goes out and we do these humanitarian missions and disaster relief um, to go out there and support. I am a Quad Zero Corpsman and I was stationed at Bangor, Washington at the time. It's a small clinic that belongs to Naval Hospital Bremerton and I wouldn't say I was directly stationed on the Mercy. It was kind of a flip of a coin um, at the time that I found out. I had a few encounters with the dental clinic while I was on the Mercy. The personnel that were working there at the time, I knew that they weren't actually stationed there. They were just support personnel, meaning they got pulled from Naval Base San Diego or from any of the outside, outside clinics to um, deploy on Pacific Partnership. Really the biggest thing with the Mercy and the Comfort, like I said, they are humanitarian missions. And if you are interested in participating in something like that, biggest tip that I can uh, afford to you is to just let your chain of command know. I know you're in poor school right now as a dental tech, but when you do get to your first command, play it by ear first, see how that goes, but know that the mercy out in the West Coast and the comfort out in the East Coast is always going to be there and they're always going to have some sort of mission. And when something does happen, whether it's outside of a different country or whatever the case, if it's a disaster relief, they most likely will be expected to help support in that aspect. So it's a great opportunity if you definitely want to travel and if you want to be able to work outside of your scope in terms of your career, but a closed mouth does not get fed. So like I said, make sure to let your chain of command know, let someone know in your command that, hey, I would be interested if a spot does open up to be able to deploy with the Mercy or with the Comfort. If you are like me and you have a family while you're in the military, deployments can get really hard really quick and from first-hand experience, I was fortunate to have my family down there the month that we were doing our pre-deployments before we actually pulled off port in San Diego. Get your routine set up because the first couple days to about a week, those that first month for me was pretty rough because I, I didn't know how to really cope at that time since it was my first deployment but like I said when it comes to routines that's really gonna be your best friend at that point in time just to get your mind distracted and then you're focused with work mind you the Mercy did have capabilities of having email access and I was able to call off ship with a phone there depending on the connectivity but even that was limited you kind of just have to take the little things and be um, grateful for that and I know your family is gonna be grateful for those little things as well so on top of the routines keeping yourself distracted but engaged with work and and whatever else you can, whether that be working out or studying for your next advancement or just lounging and watching movies.
these community relation events that I was involved with, or Carmel's for short, that the Mercy did offer while we were on a humanitarian mission relied heavily on just being involved with the community at which country we were at. So for example, at Vietnam and in Timor-Leste, I was involved with a Comrel that just included a band, the MUs that were on board, and we had a concert in Vietnam off the coast right by the Dragon Bridge. And it was pretty cool because there were kids and families and just a whole group of um, community members that spoke a different language. But when it came to music and when it came to just getting together, we had a good time and we were able to give back and just spend time off the ship. One of the most rewarding things from this deployment from the humanitarian mission that we went on was the fact that I was able to follow through with patient care, meaning I worked in an inpatient ward. I was able to have a patient and their family that were accompanying them and I was able to get them prepped, have them in a bed and get them ready for the surgery that they were about to have or whatever the case was. When that family member did go off and have that surgery, I was able to just spend time with those members that were accompanying them, whether they were kids or they were the parents. And when I was in the Philippines, I was able to speak Tagalog, my dialect, with a lot of the patients and their family members there. So it was very rewarding for me, but it was also a great experience for them because it just gave a sense of connection of just beyond, I'm in the Navy or I'm in the military or I'm in the US and you're in a different country. And it was just all about patient care at that point. And we found something that we connect with. And on top of that, once that person did have surgery and they came back, being able to take care of them post-surgery was also just another aspect that was very rewarding and seeing how happy and just how enriched they were knowing that, you know, Know, this person was dealing with some sort of pain that ever since they were growing up and now they have this amazing surgery or amazing procedure that you know just gives them that sense of relief or whatever the case the amount of gratefulness that we had from the patients while I was on board and in that ward that is something I will never forget if you like this video hit that like button if you want to know more let me know down below in the comments and don't forget to subscribe